All right, we ran a little short on time on Monday, and I wanted to just offer a little bit more explanation of uh, conductors and electrostatic equilibrium, and mainly how we handle it when there's a hole in the, in the conductor or a cavity, and then we put a charge inside of that. So we did look at these um, characteristics of conductors that are in electrostatic equilibrium. Um, we found that in these cases, all the charges will have to reside on the surface. We found that the electric field inside the conductor is zero. It's perpendicular to the conductor, and we also found that its magnitude is equal to sigma over epsilon naught. What we want to look at in this short video is what's going to happen if a conductor has a cavity. Now what we mean by a cavity is so this the idea is that this is the outer surface of the conductor and this is the inner surface of the conductor. This is the cavity. This is not part of the conductor. Um, the conductor is this part right here. So the yellow represents the conductor, and then the rest of it, the hole inside, is what we refer to as the cavity. So the things that we want to remember is that um, the charge can only be on the surface of the conductor, and in this case, when we have a cavity, there is an outer surface, and that's this right here, or an inner surface. And that's right there. And the electric field within the conductor is zero. In this picture, this means in the yellow area. That's where the electric field is going to be zero. All right. OK, so let's draw our conductor with a cavity again. Here it is. making clear what, what's the conductor and what isn't. And we're going to put a charge Q inside of here. And let's say that it's positive. Now, according to what we learned, you know, this charge would create an electric field that should radiate out away from it. problem is that we learned the electric field is zero inside the conductor. So how are we going to fix this? Well, think about what's inside the conductor, free electrons. And so when the electrons see that electric field, the electrons are going to want to move inward. And that's because just F equals QE, and the force that the electrons feel will be in the opposite direction from the electric field. So what will happen is, again, drawing our so we add that positive charge on the inside. What's going to happen is we're going to get these electrons are going to accumulate on the inside surface of the um, of the cavity. And the reason, again, they are sort of drawn there by that instantaneous electric field that was created within the conductor. But when this happens, this is actually going to end up canceling out the electric field created by this charge inside in the cavity. Now, if the total charge on the conductor was originally equal to zero, 
Then, if we have a minus Q, uh, the magnitude of the charge on this inner surface is minus Q. In order to maintain that, po that total charge is zero, that means that a total amount of positive charge will have to arrange itself on the outer surface. And that amount of charge will be plus Q. So, of course, minus Q plus Q is equal to zero. Also, notice that you can sort of imagine that this setup of charge will be creating an electric field in the opposite direction. And so that's really sort of how um, it maintains an electric field at zero inside of the conductor is because this sort of electric field set up by these charges on the inner and the outer surface will cancel out the electric field due to the charge inside the cavity. We can also use the Gaussian surface to sort of show us that the electric field is zero. If we do Gauss's law, for this purple surface inside the conductor, we would then also be able to say that the negative charge inside on this inner surface would have to be equal and opposite to the charge in the cavity so that the Q and the charge enclosed is zero. And then if the total flux through that surface is zero, the only reason that that can be true is because the electric field is zero. And so it all really kind of comes together and makes sense. So let's look at another example. Here is an example where we have a spherical shell. It's a conductor. It has an inner radius of A and an outer radius of B. So this gray area or brownish area is the cavity. It's not part of the conductor. The total charge on the conducting shell is minus 3Q. That's the total charge. And then imagine, if we put a charge of plus Q inside the cavity, what's going to happen? Well, we should then realize that negative charge is going to accumulate on this inner surface, and the magnitude of this ma negative charge, it's going to be a minus Q. That'll allow us, if we want to take a Gaussian surface inside the conductor, when we would do Gauss's law, and looked at the charge enclosed, we would find that that was zero. And that's why the electric field would be zero. Now, because the total charge of, on the conductor is minus 3Q, we've already put minus Q on the inner surface. That means that there's actually going to be some excess negative charge left over on the outer surface, which is going to be minus 2Q. So, and that's how we would solve that particular problem. So hopefully this, these two really simple examples helped make that part of the uh, conductor coverage a little bit more clear.